Heaven, a place, a city, a home, by E. M. Bounds. Chapter 18. This is the last chapter, being read by Peter John Parisi, is also known as Brian Dean. None of my audios are copyrighted. Please feel free to make as many copies as you desire to the glory of God. Chapter 18. Reunion in Heaven. Strike your tent, O pilgrim. Gird your loins and follow on. Soon your journey is ended. T'will bring thee to thy God. Claude L. Children. Much of deep and positive joy will spring from the reunion of the broken and wasted loves and friendships of earth. We shall see our friends and associate with them in stronger and more hallowed ties because we had been partners in the tears and toils of earth. The Society of Heaven stands out conspicuous and in an intense manner. Its crowds, its multitudes, its cities all express association and doubtless while there be no selfish and exclusive circles, there will be narrower, closer, select ones within the larger. Paul checks our sorrows and modifies our griefs for our dead and with these words. But I would not have you ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And, we sh and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First, Tim First Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18. What does Paul mean? that we are not to weep and despair over the graves of our loved ones who have left us? Why? Because we have hope. Hope of what? Of meeting them again and with them, to meet the Lord and be forever with Him, and forever with them. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We shall see them again. We shall know them again. We shall be with them forever. These are the points of comfort in the Apostles' words, divine comfort, which even here on earth makes us victors over death takes his sting away, wakes the tears from our eyes, and reefs our hearts with vaguest hopes. Many are the attractions of heaven, all of which should win us from the vain and perishing things of earth. First of all, Jesus, our great high priest, is there, the sun and center of that heavenly world. Then the absence of so many things which make earth undesirable, sickness and sorrow, pain and death, with earth's privations, its discomforts, its disappointments. But added to all these glorious things which should draw us to a strong magnet to heaven is the blessed hope of a glorious reunion with the loved ones who left us and have gone on before. Not only does Paul give us an intimidation of the pleasing prospect, but John in Revelation 7th chapter in showing us the things he saw when a door was opened in heaven to his gaze. He tells us who are in heaven, God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the angels, and those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Who are among these last named? Think a moment. Look back over your life and see in imagination the faces of friends once loved, who broke away from us and disappeared from view, and now are before the throne. Some of these were, were of our own households. Some whose vacant chairs are but sad reminders of them, absent from the body, but now present with the Lord. Who are they before the throne of God, in his present and intimate association with their Redeemer in heaven itself, where they serve him night and day? Their faces peer at us over the walls of the celestial city. Their eyes look at us in imagination as we gaze heavenward, and their hands beckon us on in our heavenly journey. Shall we ever see them again? Yes, if faithful, admit true tribulation, and if our robes are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Will we know them in that unseen land of light and liberty and fullness of joy? By every token. For if Moses and Elijah were recognized in the Mount of Transfiguration, if Stephen knew his Lord as they were stoning him, if divides and hell recognize Lazarus and Abraham, though far off in heaven, if we do not lose our identity in heaven and are in heaven the same identical persons we were here on earth with the same peculiarities and the same specific makeup in our entire mortal being, if memory holds its sway and performs its function, 
then there need be no doubt whatever that we shall know one another in that land where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither any more pain nor separation, for the former things are passed away. Oh, the blessed hope of a glad reunion with departed saints in the glory world. How they do attract us when we look that way. What vision of glory, what ecstasy came to the Apostle Paul, the saintly man from his association with Jesus Christ. Almost unnumbered are the illustrations of a truth so resonant of grace that Jesus Christ, even in his life, is the greatest treasure, the profoundest joy, the most gracious influence that can come to man. What earthly good can give joy like this? Death robs, death robs of every crown of joy but this. Gold, fame, honor, empire, earthly success, all are silent in the presence of death which robs of all, separates from all. Jesus Christ only can give triumph over death. He holds the keys of death. Joy in Jesus Christ is unwithered by death's touch. Come, let us anew our journey pursuit, with vigor arise and press to our permanent place in the skies. Of heavenly birth, though wandering on earth, this is not the place. But strangers and pilgrims ourselves we confess, at Jesus' call we give up our all, and still we forego, for Jesus' sake, our enjoyments below. No longing we find for the country behind, but onward we move, and still we are seeking a country above. Charles Wesley. This is the end of the book, Heaven, A Place, A City, A Home, by E.M. Bounds, being read by Peter John Paris, who is also known as Brian Dean. You can find more audio books on www.sermonaudio.com under the School of Prayer and also under www.archive.org. And you can search School of Prayer.